with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. Anybody going to bless the Lord in the house today? I didn't say patty cake him. I said, come on and give God a praise. With the fruit of your lips, can we give God a worship? Can we give God a praise? Can we just tell God how thankful we are? He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty good God. He's an excellent God. He's a marvelous God. We come to give him praise. Come on, somebody. I come to give him praise. I didn't come to look at you, but I come to give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to attempt to do this song so it'll calm me down. Acapella. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise Just to know the said the Lord I'm so glad that I've learned to trust him precious Jesus Savior and friend and I know that thou art with me he'll be with me until the end so Jesus Jesus how I trust him, how I proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all oh, for grace to trust him more. I say, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all oh, for grace to trust him more anybody trust god anybody trust god in the house come on come on come on all over the house can we give god a praise when all of my friends leave me there is somebody i can call on who will he is a wonderful god he is a wonderful savior and we honor and praise him today. We're glad to be here at New Jerusalem Ministries. Amen. Amen. Well, I know God is moving. How do you know that? Well, I was with y'all when y'all first started. Y'all don't remember, but I was the first musician at the first service at the synagogue. Pastor. Pastor Coleman and I go way back. Um, I sung in the Angelic Corleas with Amos Davis, and we used to go to PG. Uh, Y'all know what, fi find out what PG means later. Uh, <laughs> but we used to go down to PG, and I met Pastor Coleman, and God knows she was, and still is, an anointed woman of God. Amen. And I don't know, you remember me telling you, I said, you gonna start a church one day. I just feel it. And she was like, yeah, right. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Then she called me and said, hey, Rich, what are you doing this Sunday? Um, I need a musician for my first service. <laughs> and God has blessed this house, and I am so elated to see what God has done. You have moved from there to here. Amen. And God has blessed you all. Nobody but God. And so we celebrate your pastor on today. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for this awesome anointed woman of God? Amen. My friend, my sister in the kingdom, amen. Anytime I need to bounce something off, I call her. Say, yo, what you think about this? Can we go eat? 
Y'all know that way to my heart is my stomach. So, <laughs> and we want to also celebrate her husband, brother Calvin Coleman. Amen. My brother. Amen. We thank God for, to all of the ministers, deacons, saints, and friends. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. I also want to honor my goddaughter who surprised me and told me she was coming. Sister Christine. Amen. She showed up. Amen. First Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 through 20. And this was the text that was shared with me about the men's day theme. And I was trying to preach something else and God kept on taking me back to this word. So I pray that the Lord will bless you through the hearing of God's word. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible today. First Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 through 20. And before I read the text, I want you to give God praise because as it was read in my bio, the doctor said that I was it's not going to live to past four months. And I have battled cancer several times and different things. And the enemy came to attack again last year into this year. I said that you was not going to make it. Had me to call my children and family said make arrangements because it's time for him to go. Uh, that diagnosis was in February. I uh, had the surgery in June. And I am four months cancer free. So, and I don't, I don't say that to be bodacious or arrogant. I'm just confident in who God is. That he is a healer. And he is a deliverer. And if you're wondering how you're going to make it, just look at me. I'm a miracle. And tell somebody, I am a miracle. I might not have come out of it yet, but I'm on my way. Do I have any witnesses in here today? Amen. To God be the glory for the things he is doing. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 from the Amplified Bible says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? And that you are not your own property. Mm. Good God from Zion. You were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then, honor and glorify God with your body. Mm. That you are not your own property property. I want to preach from the subject, I belong to him. I belong to him. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now for this moment to declare your word. Ask God for a fresh anointing that your word will go forth with authority and power. We cancel every assignment of the devil in Jesus' name. Let the blood rule and prevail in Jesus' name. Amen. I belong to him. I belong to him. Thank you, men, for allowing me to come today to share with you in your men's day celebration. But God wanted me to remind each and every one of us here today that we belong to him. Tell somebody, I belong to God. I remember as a child growing up being raised in the Richardson household that there were certain values and morals instilled in me that have contributed and impacted me today. Some of these morals, and you probably can relate to them, in my opinion, have been lost or neglected by society today. Because we have allowed culture and concepts and customs to be reduced, to become irrelevant or no longer needed. Some of these concepts and values that my parents taught me was, you got to take out the trash every day. Make up your bed every day. Clean up the bathroom 
every day. Do your homework first and then go outside to play. Uh huh. Change your school clothes and your shoes. Y'all remember them days before you go outside to play. You're not going to play in your school clothes. You change them clothes. Wash your hands before you put your nasty fingers and get some ice and get some glass of water out of the refrigerator. Y'all remember those days? Um, when grown folks are talking, shut your mouth. Uh huh. As a matter of fact, go in your room and shut the door. Or better yet, go outside because you ain't got no business being in grown folks' conversation. Y'all remember that? Uh, we sit at the table and we eat dinner together as a family. And you're going to eat what I cook and we are not going no McDonald's or Burger King. We are not going to have your own personal pan pizza today. You're going to eat what I cook or you're going hungry. Y'all remember we had them kind of stories? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When it's lightning outside, you go somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and be still because God is talking. Y'all remember them parents? My parents were just mean. I don't, I don't know about y'all parents, but my parents were just mean. They had them old school country through the theological purposes and, and, and sayings. I didn't believe all of that craziness, but it was valued in me. And even my children, they would tell you today, my daddy is getting crazy because he does the same stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe that one of the reasons why these things were taught and instilled and drilled over and over and over again in my head was because I represented the Richardson family. And wherever I went, people knew that I was a Richardson. They wanted them to know everywhere I went that my name was William Anthony Otis Richardson. It didn't matter at that time that I was adopted or who my biological mother and father was. You are now a Richardson and you represent the Richardson family. I'm going somewhere. All that I said, all that I did was a representation of the family that I came from. I'm going somewhere with this. Your name has value. Your life has value. And no matter what has happened to you, before you got here we got to make sure with God's help that everything you do will be successful in life and most of all it brings glory and honor to God as a child growing up it was important that my language my actions my behavior reflected whose name I represented uh-huh although I had family members who lived across the street down the the street around the corner up the way down the way Betty and Otis Richardson said to me as long as you are living in this house Mm -hmm. Y'all remember y'all parents said the same thing. As long as you're living in this house, you will do what we say because you are our responsibility. And until you get grown and out on your own, you got to follow the rules that we set in this house. I'm going somewhere with you. I remember one time I was calling folks honkies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was calling folks honkies because I heard another friend of mine calling my white classmates that name. Well, when the teacher called my mama, and my mama heard about it, when I got home, there was no discussion. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. There was no beating of the clothes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You took everything off. <laughs> Uh-huh, yeah, y'all remember them days. Uh -huh. You took everything off, and whatever she could grab her hand right then in the stenching cord, her shoe, the ironing cord, the, you know, sometimes, now she won't penny. You won't no penny from good times where you, she burn you up with the iron. But she says, let me, let me tell you something. You represent the Richardson family, and you can't be out there disrespecting our name. You miss your cue to shout. So she washed my mouth out, y'all, with not the good soap, but she washed my mouth out with ivory soap. Lord, have mercy. I think I still got a taste right there. Help the Holy Ghost. 
So she was teaching me that you are going to be important one day and you have a responsibility to have value. She even spoke over my life that you're going to be a preacher one day and you don't want nothing to affect the grade of anointing that God has placed over your life. Come on here, somebody. You might not see it now. You may not understand it now. But your life is more than houses and cars and boats and breasts and disposals. You have a responsibility to the anointing on your life. And men and women and children, everyone assembled in this house today, God says you have a responsibility to protect what God has given you. Your name is just not good on earth, but it has value in heaven. You can't treat your name like it's a dust rag and when it gets soiled and dirty, you just throw it away. But you got to wash out the soil, uh -huh, the soil of sin and make sure it becomes ready for the next use. Paul tells the Corinthian church here in the text that there are certain requirements, restrictions, and responsibilities that are mandated to comply with if we belong to God. God. Y'all hear that? He said there are certain requirements, restrictions, and responsibilities if, say that if, you belong to God. Because one thing I have learned, Pastor Coleman, is that everybody that comes to church don't belong to God. You can belong to church, but don't, that doesn't necessarily mean that you belong to God. We can sing, we can shout, we can even dance as if we know God, but our actions dictate the fact that we don't have God inside of us. Oh, come on here, somebody, getting tight in here. But the first thing he tells us is haven't you learned that your body belongs to the Holy Ghost? Mm. To understand and appreciate the background of the text, we must learn about what was going on with the Corinthian church. Paul writes this letter to the church of Corinth between 53 and 54 AD. The church of Corinth was in the middle of the city, which was considered a cosmopolitan area. It sat on a small piece of land between two bodies of water. And according to the historical facts, this was the place that everybody came to if you were somebody. You know, y'all know we got those certain places that you want to go hang out at if you want to be known and be recognized. It was considered the Las Vegas of that time. Everybody had to be in Corinth. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. This was an economic dynasty. It attracted all kinds of people who had their own belief system. The Greeks, the Romans, the Orientals were coming to Corinth and having their own ideology about what religion was. And then Paul sets up a church in Corinth to establish Christianity as a new way of religion. And I have been learned to be learned, um, saints of God, that sometimes God will plant us in the midst of adversity just to show the light of Christ that is within us. But that means that you can't be on the light side today and on the dark side tomorrow. Oh, come on here, somebody. Paul says either you're going to have to choose whom is going to be your God. Is it going to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or are you going to serve another master? People were used to doing whatever they wanted to do. No accountability. Not, no hierarchy to answer to. Just do what you please do whatever it feels good to you if you like it I love it uh-huh but Paul says in the text you can't do what everybody else does and still think that you're going to stay under this roof remember what my parents said as long as you're in this roof and under this roof you will, will receive the protection of what comes in this house but the moment you decide to be disobedient and do whatever you 
want to do, you have to suffer the consequences. And I believe that's what is happening to the world today. We have been living like the church of Corinth. Let everything in and let everything out. Come on here, somebody. We're doing whatever we want to do, and there is no accountability. Not in this house, but I'm just saying as a body of Christ, we are looking like the world, and the world looking like the church, and the church looking like the world, and God is saying, I need somebody, somebody to stand up and set a standard for Christ. Come on here, somebody. He says, I believe that in this season, that's why I believe that the pandemic has happened, because God had to shift the body of Christ back to the basics. Come on here, somebody. We didn't got too comfortable with doing whatever we want to do. We let everybody, you sleep with anybody, and you come on up and lead praise and worship. Oh, come on, you sleep with anybody and you can come on and preach in the pulpit. Oh, no, 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 no. You do whatever you want to do. You out there in the club and then you're trying to usher the folks in into the presence of God. No, God says, I need the church to get back to the basics of living holy and righteous before God. Clap your hands, all you people. Uh, I believe that there's a remnant of people who are hearing this word today and are determined that I, for God I live and for God I die. I believe that there is a remnant of people who are determined to run on and see what the end is going to be. I believe that there is somebody in here today who that is committed to live holy for God for the Bible declares in Hebrews 12 and 14, pursue peace with men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And I know some of us, we talk about holiness uh, by being in a denomination uh, that it, uh, what a, you can't wear this and you can't wear that hey you can't wear no red lipstick and you got to have long dresses on it and, you, and me and I only can wear black blue and brown suits uh, but I have learned uh, that the holiness is beyond denomination uh, holiness is a way of life uh, a life of godly conduct uh, and moral values uh, might not do everything right but my heart is pure unto the Lord my conscience my behavior, my life must be reflective of the one who lives inside of me. Come on here. Who's living inside of you? Uh -huh. So we see here in the text that Paul is just not worried, concerned about how you look. But he says, what is inside of you? My point number one, who's living inside of you? Who's living inside of you? If you say that you belong to God, there should be an indication of who controls you. Oh, let me say that one more time. Let me say that. If you say you belong to God, there should be an indication of the one who lives and controls you. If you're always mad and fussing and disgruntled and irritated and frustrated and angry, then maybe God is not living inside of you as you believe. When things don't go your way, what controller comes up out of your mouth? Is it the devil or is it Jesus? When things go, don't go your way, are you cussing for out? Are you laying them out? Or are you going in your secret closet and praying? Come on here, somebody. Who's living inside of you? The story is told of this lady at this church that I used to play for. And when she died at the funeral, the co-worker said, is that the woman in the casket? Because the person that was at the church did not match the person that they worked with. She was always mean and hateful, uh, but at the church, she displayed a nice spirit. Uh, she was baking cakes and making cookies and fried chicken, but at home, uh-huh, and at work, uh, she was the devil incarnated. Uh, it's not what you do in the church, uh, but what are you doing outside of the church? Uh, when the organ is turned off uh, and there are no deacons around, who are you? Mm. What turns you on and off? What gets your blood boiling? Paul says that the Holy Ghost has to be on the inside of you, and you can't separate the Holy Ghost from you if you are in Christ. Y'all ain't miss your cue to shout. Uh, you know how we do when we get mad, we're gonna tell somebody, you better be glad I ain't lay my legend down. You I'm about to give you a piece of my mind. You can't lay the Holy Ghost down and pick it back up again. Come on. 
on here, saints. Uh, get yourself together and let us live for the Lord. Uh, now, I know some of y'all are saying, uh, well, none of us are perfect. Uh, and yes, you are right. Uh, but this leads to my sad, side note. If you have the Holy Ghost in you, then he should check you when you are out of order. Lord, have mercy. That's some nice lights over there. That's, some, that's, that's nice over there. Because see, some of y'all are getting upset right now. But the Holy Ghost says, if, uh -huh, don't pay me no mind. If, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, then the Holy Ghost ought to check you when you get out of order. When you get mad with somebody, you lay them out. The Holy Ghost ought to check you and say, no, baby, go back and repent. I don't, I don't appreciate the way you said it. And you need to get that right. I'm, I'm concerned in this new day how we can speak in tongues, but we can't speak to our neighbor neighbor huh. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about this Holy Ghost because this Holy Ghost because the whole because maybe it's Casper maybe 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 it's one of them Ghostbusters or, or, or something like this but but what I've learned, Pastor Coleman, is that the Holy Ghost is not only a keeper and a deliverer and a comforter, but he is a checker in the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on here. He ought to check you when you're wrong. He ought to check you when you're stealing. He ought to check you when your mouth is out of order. He ought to tell you to shut up and get on your knees and pray. What kind of Holy Ghost that you want that you can shout, but he can't check you? Who is your daddy? Ah. Yeah, you know we we watch them them TV shows. You are not the father. <laughs> you know they go through all these tests, and and the mama be up there crying and snotting. I know he mine. I know. I know. Yeah, I slept with him. And the tests come back. You are not the father. And guess what the Holy Ghost is saying. I, you detested me. You ain't listening to me. When I tell you to do something, you don't do it. I am not your father. Oh, come on here, somebody. Because you are the one to repent. Second point says, you don't belong to you. You don't belong to you. Paul says, your body is not yours. Everything that we say Everything that we do should be a reflection of the master that lives inside of us. You cussing folks out. You laying people out all the time. You can't get along with your neighbors. You get mad when the pastor don't call your name. Not here, but I'm just talking about churches I've been at. <laughs> your name ain't on the bulletin. Y'all ain't got no bulletins. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, you know, you get mad because sister such and such didn't, didn't, didn't recognize my name because I brought the chicken last week. You didn't bring, you didn't make the chicken. You didn't cook it. You picked it up from Farm Fresh on your way here. Uh, come on here. Stop lying. Stop trying to be important. Uh, something is wrong when you don't belong. To God. He says, No one can serve two masters. E either you love one or you hate the other. Who's ruling in your life? Who has control of your life? What spirit has more control over you than in you? We spend more time on Facebook than in the book. Yeah, yeah. I'm guilty. I'm guilty because, you know, I roll over sometimes at night and the phone beeping. And somebody sent me a text message or inbox and, you know, you wake up and then you get all in there. And the Lord said, turn that off. Well, Lord, let me check this. Let, let, let me give, give me five more minutes, Lord. I'm talking about me because if I talk about you, you get mad. So, I, I, you know, I, Lord, I said, Lord, give me five more minutes. He said, suppose I take five minutes from you. See, see, see y'all don't see. We always want to talk about the God of the New Testament, but there is a side of God from the Old Testament that has judgment, you know, and, and He will correct you when you are out of order. I said, God, what, 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 what are you trying to say? He said, What I'm trying to tell you is that we have to cut away the soul ties 
that keep us under their spell. We talk more to our friends about what is going on than the master himself. You say you belong to him, but you don't spend no time with him. When you get in trouble, who do you seek after? When problems arise, where do you go? Who do you turn to? But Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. The word righteous means to live morally right, to be decent, to be ethical, to be honorable, just, right-minded, upright, virtuous. I can't hang out with you because that might offend the Holy Ghost that's inside of me. Okay, okay. Paul says, if the Holy Ghost is inside of you, then there are certain requirements and restrictions that you have to have in according to the Holy Ghost that lives inside of you. You can't be hanging out with junkie folks and people that always have foolishness and expect for God to live inside of you completely. I know it's rough and I, you have needs, but you got to ask God to keep your mind. I, I know you want to cuss them out, but Lord, keep my mouth. Come on here, somebody. I want to get revenge and retaliate, but the Lord says, if you just let me handle it, I will fix the problem. I have a responsibility to guard the anointing and the gift that he has placed inside of you. I remember I used to play for Bishop um, Willie Hilton at Friendship Baptist in Newport News, and he used to tell all the social ministers he says guard your anointing guard it guard it guard and that's just not for preachers and all of that stuff but that's for everybody that's of the household of faith you can't hang out with junkie folks come on here somebody you can't be hanging out with messy folks you can't be hanging out with people who always keep stuff stirred up because it will affect the Holy Ghost that lives inside of you. And God has telling people, Paul is saying us today, he says, guard your anointing. Point number three. I'm so glad about this point. He says the reason why you have a responsibility uh, because of the fact that he bought us. Come on here, somebody. The text says that not only are, is the Holy Ghost living within us uh, and that we don't belong to ourselves, but he bought us with a price. Uh, he purchased us uh, with his own shed blood. Uh, when I look back over the mess that I did before Christ, uh, since Christ, uh, and now with Christ, uh, yet his blood purchased my salvation. He has redeemed me from the pits of hell. Uh, I was on an Amtrak train going straight to hell but because he valued me because he loved me because he decided to die just for me he rescued me he purchased me I was lost without a GPS system I was on a destination to hell without AAA I was on a crash course to death hell and the grave but because his blood washes me because his blood covers me because his blood reaches to the highest mountain because his blood flows to the lowest valley it's that blood the blood of Jesus which is better than dish detergent that blood that covers a multitude of sin that blood that speaks up when I am guilty that blood that cures cancer that blood that moves misery and strife that blood that makes, makes all things new. It's because of the blood that I have a responsibility to say thank you for all that you've done. You ought to tell God thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Oh, the blood that reaches. Come on, here, somebody. Come on, give him praise. Huh. It's that blood. It's that blood. It's that blood. I know your blood is good, but his blood, his blood is better. Thank God for the blood. I thank him for the blood. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I dare you to give God a praise for the blood. Come on here. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's something about the blood. It's something about the blood. The blood will shift you. The blood will move you. The blood will tell you to keep your mouth shut. The blood will tell you don't pray. Don't get back after them. But get on your knees and pray. And the blood will cover you. Ah, he says, Paul says it's that blood. That blood. Because he purchased us. I have a responsibility to say thank you and show how appreciative I am of the gift he has given me. So now I have to honor God with my body. I got to honor God with my life. I honor God with my tongue. I honor God with my worship. I honor God by keeping his word. Oh, come on here, somebody. There, isn't this a, a little analogy that God gave me? Y'all sit down. Y'all making me nervous. <laughs> Let me tell you. Lord, when I was writing the sermon, Lord took me back to a time right before my parents died. I remember it was the last Christmas before they had transitioned six months apart. And I, it was Christmas time, and I couldn't wait to open up the gifts that the parents gave me. And they always would give me stuff I needed. You know, coats, sweaters, shoes, jeans. You know, you get a gift from one of your aunts that you, you know, thank you, auntie. <laughs> Is the receipt in the bag? Is the receipt in the box? Y'all know y'all did it too, don't even try it. <laughs> You know, you get the, the gift from across the street, you be like, she gave me the same fruitcake last year. <laughs> and, uh, but this one particular Christmas, it was an extra box under the tree. And I said, well, what's this gift for? And they said, it's a just because gift. We wanted to show you how proud we are of you because of who you are. Not knowing that my mother was going to pass couple of months after that from cancer. Not knowing that my father was going to be found dead in the house six months later. And it was an unusual gift, but they said it's just because gift. And they said to me, you may not have deserved it because of all of the craziness you did. Because <laughs> I was crazy. <laughs> but because we love you, yeah, yeah. we wanted to do something extra special for you. Just because. You cleaned up your room. You helped your mama out. You stayed on the honor roll. You worked hard in the church. You didn't cause us too much grief. But you didn't make your name look bad. So because you honored yourself, we're going to give you something extra. And I come to tell you, saints of the most high, when you honor God in your body, when you honor God in your mind, when you honor God in your soul, he gives you something special. And I say, God, what are you saying? He says, tell them before you leave that I've given them certain promises that just in case they forgot. He says, when you honor me, then he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. Here's the promise when you do right by God. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the northern pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Well, y'all ain't clapping your hands about that. So God told me to give you another promise. He said, be strong and courageous, Psalm 46 and 1. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Oh, come on here. I heard another one. Exodus 14 and 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. John 16 and 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. Here is the promise. I have overcome the world. Here's another promise. Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Acts 17, 27 and 28. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him. Though he is not far from any of us, for in him we live live and move and have our being. John 15 and 7 says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, here's the promise. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Here's another promise. 1 John 2 and 17, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. Come on here. John 15 and 6 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. Y'all ain't shouting yet. I'm so glad that God God has chosen me in spite of my flaws, in spite of my failures, in spite of my foolishness, in spite of my flesh. The Lord has chosen me. I feel a shout in the temple because the Lord says he has chosen us. I know you messed up, but I still chose you. You're going to make mistakes. I'm still chosen you. I know you're going to mess up. You might do something wrong. But you belong to me. And if I am in you and you in me, you can ask whatever you want. What do you need from the Lord? What do you need from the Lord? If you need health, if you need a miracle, if you need healing, if you need wisdom, if you need financial prosperity, God says, if you are in me and I'm in you, I'll give it to you. Come on here, somebody. He has chosen me. I can't say what I want to say. Can't do what I want to do. Can't go everywhere I want to go because I have a responsibility to the gift that he has placed inside of me. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. I belong to him. I belong to him. Aren't you glad that you belong to God? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that you belong to God? Come on, all you people. Come on, come on, come on. Give God a praise. I belong to the Father. Maybe somebody here today, you are out of the ark of safety. Uh, you go to church, but God ain't in you. You know the dance, you know the features, you know the style, you know the worship, but God ain't in you. It's not about church relationship. It's about having a relationship with him. The one who is able to keep you from falling and to present you. Come on here, somebody. Lord, have mercy. That's where the blood steps in, making you faultless before his throne with a seed and joy. Yes, maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus. You must come in through that door. Not, not the door of your church, but the doors of your heart to be receptive and receptive to Jesus Christ. 
the only begotten son. Won't you accept him now? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, and a part of you says, maybe you're watching by social media, we offer Christ to you today. Mm-hmm. And you say, preacher, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to get it right. I, I come, I'll come to church when I get it together. Trust me, we ain't got it together. Can I get a, can, can, can I get some witnesses in here? We still learning. He's still refining us. But I thank God that I'm in. And I'm not out. I'm glad that I'm in. The main thing is you come in. Once you come in, he'll work on the other stuff. He'll work on the other stuff. But you just got to get in. Uh, is anybody glad that you're in? Come on. If, are you glad that you're in? If we have a saved house today, then we will celebrate and we'll see you at the day of the rapture. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands. So much for joining us today but listen you may have just listened to that message and you're saying to yourself oh I am encouraged but I still would like for someone to pray with me if you need prayer this morning you want somebody to agree with you in prayer type prayer in the comments or text prayer to the number that is on your screen and someone will reach out to you if you listen to the message today and after hearing it you're saying to yourself you know what I realize that I need a savior. I realize that I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If that's you today, we invite you to, to text the word salvation to the number that's on the screen or write salvation in the comments because the Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says that we will be saved. And so you can be saved today simply by making that confession. But type the word salvation or text the word salvation and someone will reach out to you. You may be saying, I, I, I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I love the Lord, but I need a church home. And I want to invite you, no matter where you are, you may be near or you may be far. I want to invite you this morning, if you're looking for a church home, to become a member of New Jerusalem Ministries. We would love to have you be a citizen here with us. If that's you, you're looking for a church home, simply text the word HOME to the number that is on the screen or write HOME in the comments and someone will reach out to you. Again, we're so grateful that you joined us today. And we pray that you have a glorious day in the Lord, that you continue to walk in his love and continue to bask in his joy. God bless you.